Hello, it is 11 a.m. in Tripoli. It's 10 a.m. here in London. I'm Onita Rajpal. And I'm Zane Verge. You're watching World One. Also ahead, searching for safety and finding trouble. Tunisian migrants set off a row over refugees in Europe. First, forces loyal to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi have been pounding the town of Misrata. After more than a month of fighting there, the United Nations is due to hold talks on just how to deal with the crisis facing people in the rebel-held city. Fred, give us an idea of what is actually happening right now in Misrata. There is a back and forth between the rebels and, the, and, and those forces that are loyal to Muammar Gaddafi in terms of how these uh, rebel fighters are actually making any headway. Is there any clear idea or indication uh, or picture, I should say, on how, on how that's looking at this point? Witnesses say dozens of people were injured on Sunday when security forces attacked protesters with gunfire, batons and tear gas. More women have joined thousands of anti-government demonstrators after President Ali Abdullah Saleh said female protesters were violating Islam. His president, good luck Jonathan, looks like he's on course for election victory. A partial vote count showed he was streets ahead of his main rival and that point he had over, and at that point he had over 19 million votes. Jonathan is known to Nigerians, but the electorate have had about a year to get to know the, the politician. In terms of his background, he was sworn into office last May. He served as a vice president under uh, President Umaro Yaradua, who died last year. His party is the, uh, the PDP, the People's Democratic Party. A little bit of background on him. He is 53 years old. He is from the, uh, he's a Christian from the, the uh, Ijaw ethnic group. He was born and raised in the southern Niger Delta and later became governor of the oil-rich region. As for his education, he, is a, he has a PhD in zoology and has been described as a, a mild-mannered academic. In case you're wondering how much time there is till the royal family dances its way for real to the aisle. Our countdown is happening and it is 11 days from now. Only 11 days. If you don't have an invitation, you do now. Tune into CNN. We'll be there, guys. I've always wondered, I wonder if they actually saw that, the royal family. Can you imagine? Well, you know, the, the, you know they, they have an online account, so who knows? They, oh, may, have, they, they may have seen it. If the real wedding was like that, I really <laughs> would want to go. Seriously. You'd watch. Then I'd be interested. Yeah. <laughs> Chances are, not so much. No. no. All right, Zane, thank you very much for that. Let's talk about the NBA playoffs. Kobe Bryant and company looking for their, uh, their quest for the, for the third straight championship. You're right. It didn't really start off according to plan, though, Monita. This game against the New Orleans Hornets, if you consider how the Lakers did against Hello. And you know, there aren't many certainties in, in life, Monita and Zane, but one of them seems to be if Rafa plays in Monte Carlo, he's going to win. He's a clay court guy, isn't he? Yes, he is. He was undefeated through the yeah, clay court season last year. And this year, he started off in perfect fashion once again. Excellent. All right. Was well, a huge supporter of his. So good, good for him. All right. Another certainty you. in life, taxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. thanks, Lisa. Happy Monday to you, too. You're watching World One Live from London. The election in Finland on Sunday ended with big gains for right-wing nationalists. The True Finns party won 39 seats compared to just six in the last parliament. It could be bad news for the EU's plan to deliver a big financial bailout for Portugal. The true Finns are strongly opposed to spending Finnish taxpayers' money to rescue other EU countries. The center-right National Coalition Party won the most seats, that's according to preliminary election results, but the nationalists' gains uh, mean they could play a key role in the new parliament. Uh, so what does the vote in Finland mean for the EU's battle to get on top of its debt crisis. Of course, this has huge European continent-wide uh, ramifications. We want to get more on this from CNN's Ellie, Emily Rubin, and she joins us now with more on that. Emily, of course, this is, uh, is it, does this come as a surprise? Um, not particularly, Manita. I mean, I suppose what's, what's quite interesting about this is the Finnish elections don't tend to get much international coverage, but what happened last night has basically changed the political landscape. And Eurosceptic nationalists party true Finns won at 20 percent of the vote as you say and the situation is getting worse as opposed to getting better anytime soon. Emily thank you very more much. More on the violent storm that has spawned all those tornadoes. Let's get more on that. Let's go to Ivan Cabrera over at the International Weather Center looking at the radars there. Ivan? Yeah looking at the radars indeed and looking at that video in fact I saw that on YouTube and that is exactly what you should not. Let's look at now at uh, some of the stories that are trending on social media right now at number three as we've been reporting here on World One people in Nigeria have been voting for their next president and there's a lot of talk online about who is winning. Right now it looks like the current president 
president. Good luck, Jonathan, is on track for victory. At number two, Nadal makes history again. Rafael Nadal has proven that he is the man to beat on clay. The tennis champion won the Monte Carlo Masters tour on Sunday, extending his record of most successive titles won in an ATA ATP tour event. And at number one, the most popular story on uh, CNN.com right now, the powerful storms that hit the U.S. over the past three days. More than 45 people right across six states have been killed, and one CNN meteorologist describes the destruction in North Carolina as epic. Thanks for watching. This is World One Live from London. I'm Zane Verge. And I'm Monita Rajpal. You're watching CNN. We just wanted to give you another look at this amateur video of a tornado. This is in the U.S. state of North Carolina. Take a look. It's so dramatic. See what happens. This is World One on CNN. Here we go. No. Hang on. I love you.